What's up guys, Justin here with TheCGEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out the newest release of Blender, version 3.1. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so as always, you can download the new version of Blender, version 3.1 for free on the Blender homepage by visiting blender.org. In addition, you can also click on the button for what's new in order to see what's been added inside of this new version of Blender. So this is an exciting new release. Um, a lot of it's been focused on improving performance for Blender. So we'll kind of scroll through this and take a look at it um, and see kind of what they've adjusted. So first off, we've got some substantial improvements to cycles um, that's been contributed by Apple. So they basically improve this so that you're gonna get better results on your Apple computers. If you're running an M1 computer running Mac OS 12.2 or newer, or you have an Apple computer with um, AMD graphics cards running a 12.3 or newer version of Mac OS. So if you are a Mac user, they have improved that. So they've added a new object called the point cloud object. Basically what that does is that allows you to take a point cloud and um, render it as spheres. So if we jump over into the release notes and look at this more in depth, basically what this is going to do is this is going to allow us to basically generate these with geometry nodes or import them. And then you can actually like work with them inside of Blender. So you can see how simulating things like sand and other things like that can be significantly improved with this new version. So they have made a number of additional changes to cycles as well. Um, you can mouse over all of these on the uh, what's new page in order to read more about them, but they are constantly improving cycles. Um, so one of the things that's super exciting is some of the stuff that's going on with geometry nodes. So I don't know if any of you saw the uh, forum post where um, there, there, there's a guy that actually created like this, this real-time building um, that you can apply like damage to and like age to, and he built it all on geometry nodes. So I will try to find that and link it down below. But I mean, basically what this comes down to is they're really kind of improving both the user interface and the number of nodes that are available. All right, so one of the usability upgrades that they've made is they've added the ability to drag and drop and search inside of geometry nodes. So basically what that means is that means that when you're adding a new geometry node like this, so when you click and drag this out, notice how it's automatically gonna go into a search function where you can start looking for these different versions. And so these results are also filtered by socket types. So basically it's gonna show you the socket types that are compatible with the kind of node that you've dragged off of. So from a time-saving standpoint, this could be fairly significant, especially if you do a lot of work with geometry nodes. So there's a lot of things about the nodes. I don't wanna get super in-depth on these right now, but um, they're just constantly updating and improving these. So they've got an in instance attribute node so that you can take different instances and give them different attributes. And so there's a sample file that you can download that's gonna give you kind of an idea of the way that the instance attribute attribute nodes work. Um, so you can see how, for example, that you can use this in order to kind of like randomize the grass and other things like that. You can play around with this. You can download it for free at the link on that page. So like I said, there's a number of other things that have been added in here as well. So one of the ones that are highlighting on this page is the extrude mesh node, which is basically going to give you the ability to extrude objects in Blender. So notice how what this is doing is this is actually extruding um, from a flat surface inside of Blender itself right here. So there's also a number of other Others, like the scale elements node, which is going to work with the new extrude node and some other nodes in here as well. So again, you can kind of read through these. They've got sample files that you can download and follow along with, as well as there's a number of new nodes that are contained in here. So like an arc node, merge by distance, um, just a bunch of different things. So geometry nodes is seeing huge improvements. Um, this is probably something I should be talking about more on the channel. So we may talk about that a little bit more in the future. Um, and again, if you have not had a chance to go watch the video on this, which uh, I will link to the forum post about it, um, definitely do that. You're definitely seeing performance improvements in here, but just the way that Geometry Nodes is growing right now is kind of unprecedented. Like the stuff that people are doing is just crazy. And as more nodes are added, um, better things are happening. They're also improving the performance, which is great. So they've also added the ability to crease vertices in your model. So you can use this in order to crease crease objects, which is going to give you um, a lot more control over what you can create when using subdivision modeling. Um, in addition, there's also now the ability to copy global transformations, which is pretty cool. So for example, if you look at like, uh, if you look at this model right here, which is a great example, notice how they're moving the hand and then they're using the copy global translation function in order to uh, copy the location of something that this character is holding so that you can place things like when you're rigging them, 
um, so that things will track better. So def definitely a great improvement there. So we've also got more improvements to Grease Pencil. So for example, you've got the ability now to uh, use negative values for the fill tool, which is basically going to allow you to add outlines and other things like that to edges in Blender. So there's some other improvements to Grease Pencil in here as well if you do work with Grease Pencil. Um, another one that could be a huge time saver uh, moving forward and really kind of a performance piece is they've now added the ability to actually use your GPU in order to accelerate the subdivision modifier. So what that means is that means that now you're going to be able to actually use your GPU in order to do these calculations. So your GPU is probably going to be able to calculate this a lot faster. Notice how there's a significant performance savings in here by doing this. So being able to harness the power of your GPU to do this subdivision is definitely an improvement. There's been some performance improvements on exporting different kinds of files. So notice how it's going to be, especially on large files, it's going to be significantly faster exporting things um, to OBJ and to FBX. So if if you do a lot of that, that could be a time saver, and as well as they've also improved the size of images that you can bring into your viewport. So this video currently is showing a 52K image, which I'm not gonna lie, I've never even used a 52K image, it must be massive, but notice how this is now performing and allowing you to use those much larger files. So if you do use large image files, uh, this could definitely make working with those a lot easier. And so there's some other things that are also going to improve some perf your performance, as well as there's a new benchmark. So the new Blender benchmark is going to render these scenes and allow you to see how your computer, um, how your hardware performs. Um, I'm not going to do that because a 746 megabyte download on my internet would take forever, but you can definitely download the launcher and do that. So there's a ton of additional smaller changes in here, which you can read through. So you can definitely like mouse over these and this is going to take and all of these will take you to either the developer link or the uh, release notes so you can see exactly what these do but overall the focus on this new release seems to have been improving the performance of blender so make sure to go check this out and then come back and leave a comment down below what do you think about this new release the new features the direction blender is going i just love having that conversation with you guys as always thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and i will catch you in the next video thanks guys